Welcome everyone, my name is Fist Truck. Some time ago in one of my videos, I was showing off some build and kind of alluded to it being a future build guide. So here we are with how to be cool in Elden Ring. Just to clarify what I mean about this build, I put together a build that I thought just looks cool. Is it the best build? No, it's also definitely a new game plus build because some of the stuff we have in here is kind of pointless and requires a shit ton of stat investment in order to use it, which on a fresh playthrough would kind of be just you throwing level ups in the trash. I'm gonna go over the stats real quick, but before I do that, make sure to hit that subscribe button so my stats go up. Also, stats really aren't all that important. My character was like level 300 something when I did this, so at that point, you just have levels for the hell of it, and the law of diminishing returns really kicks in mega hard at that point, so things just don't matter. If you're doing this on a lower new game plus, or for some reason you're doing this on a fresh playthrough, probably your most important stat would just be strength, because I believe the scythe scales more off of strength than it does with dex, and then everything else is just kind of there to supplement the build and also make sure to skip death lightning if you're doing this on a fresh character because it's a waste of time step one we're getting the black flame incantation where do you get that well it's going to be inside Stormvale castle there's one of these doors with the weird goblin imp motherfuckers that you put the keys into you know you're at the right stone sword door once you've made it past the rat guardians once you're inside, one chest is going to have the God Slayer seal, and the other one will have the book that you're going to hand to the turtle. Why are you going to give it to the Pope turtle? Well, simple, because turtles fuck. And if I can find any excuse to say that in a video, guess what? I will. Step two. I really like step two in this video because it's going to lump a few things into one step. That way it saves time on me recording this video. Nonetheless, everything we're going to be getting is inside of Lyernia. First, we'll get Blood Flame Blade real quick, which is near this one church where this one guy shows up to rock your shit. Thankfully, we don't have to go inside that thing or be anywhere near it just kill this one beetle blood flame blade is yours but i imagine you probably knew that already after that let's gallop over to the really big man over here and buy the carrion filigree crest off of him if he seems to not give a fuck about you you probably need to talk to ronnie or wolfman whose name currently escapes me lastly we're galloping back over to the academy gonna go fuck up the red wolf of red wolves leave the room pop a quick u-turn go get radagon's casting thing this shit makes casting faster which considering this is really just a melee build with one really 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 stupid useless incantation and the casting speed is incredibly important step three we're getting the earth tree seal or it really could be whatever one you want but this one gives a shit ton of incantation scaling so i use it that's it really and you know you're on new game plus so at this point you have so many points it really doesn't matter what you do with it step four this is where we start getting into the nitty gritty of things that suck nuts we're getting the grave scythe because I think it just looks the coolest out of all of them. That's about it. Now, in order to get this, you need to farm the Skeleton. Really, any Skeleton that has a scythe. However, I found the one that's right after Godric Castle, whether you go through it the normal way or go around it. There's a graveyard there. One or two of them have a scythe. You can farm them over and over again. The bonfire is right around the corner. It makes farming this really, really quick and efficient. With that being said, my drop rate with things in this game are absolute butt water. And this time, I did actually go through all lengths possible to really up my drop rates but they still like fucking my butt i think going forward if i can avoid farming things off of enemies i will because i hate doing this i hate playing games like this like i really like playing monster hunter but at the same time killing the same monster for hours on end to just try and get like a gem or a mantle or whatever the fuck they call them now y you know looking back on it, it's not the best experience but that's not this game moving on step five we're going to the part of the game that i keep forgetting exists and it's that one part after the capital city but before the mountaintop of the giants I forget the name of it. Forbidden Lands. Make sure it's nighttime, which in this specific place, it's really hard to tell because it's always pretty foggy. With that being said, when it's nighttime, it's slightly darker. Once in night, you will run into one of the most original bosses that you could possibly run into in this area. <clears throat> the Knight's Cavalry. Uh, kill this one. He gives you the Phantom Slash thing. This Ash War is really, really fucking cool. I don't think it was made with this weapon in mind, but it just looks cool as shit. With well, that being said, every time you use it, you will miss the last hit. Step six. I was torn in between whether or not to leave this as a second to last step or step six. So here we are. We're going to be getting the Lord of Blood's Exaltation off of this one guy that's in this one catacombs that I also keep forgetting exists in this game. How are you going to get there? We need to go to the sewers that are underneath the capital city, drop off at this one point then watch out for larry the lober because there's two of him and he's really gonna fuck you up thankfully this game isn't afraid of having friendly fire in it because larry number one really hates larry number two as both larry's try and get to you but you just perfectly position yourself around the side of this concrete pipe which come to think about it a concrete pipe in this game is incredibly out of place it never occurred to me until I was doing this voiceover. Why is there a concrete pipe in this game? I'm gonna re-watch the video to confirm this. Wait, no, it's not concrete. I'm tripping. I don't know why I remember that wrong. 
After you've defeated the lobsters, continue onwards towards the catacombs. Once in the catacombs, this is one of those trippy ones where they have three parts that look exactly the same. Essentially, once you see this little nipple thing sticking out of the ground, you know you're at the right place. The boss is some NPC guy. The real boss are the two dogs because dogs are annoying as fuck always in all of these games. So once you kill the dogs, then this guy's just kind of a joke. I did this one as Plonk, and yeah, having those extra parry frames kind of takes a hot steaming dump on this man. Step seven, we're getting in the sanguine hood. How do we get that? Well, you got to get invaded by the sanguine noble, which happens somewhere within the consecrated snowfield or whatever it's called. Just watch out for the bear because uh, the, I don't trust the bears. Bears. All he has to do is just beat this guy's ass, which for the most part, he seems to not have much of a will to live, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Uh, he drops the whole sanguine set. However, we're just going to be using the hood. Well, what naturally comes right after you fought that guy? Move on to the Moog or Mogwin's palace by using this portal or doing the invasions, whatever it takes to get there. You're ready, no? Work your way through it, and we're going to go fuck up the real Mog. I really like this fight, even though the blood stuff he leaves on the ground is annoying and the whole knee heel, knee heel, knee heel thing. It's also really annoying if you don't know the gimmick behind it with the stuff that you have to drink after defeating him we're gonna go back to the round table hold and interact with this real life amazon employee over here who's being forced to work even after she has already died by the lord of blood robe off of her now it's up to you whether or not you want to take the thing off the shoulder uh, i think it looks kind of ridiculous but i'm all for the ridiculous so i keep it number nine we're about to do the same shit except just with a different boss continue through the story go fight maliketh the good boy after beating his health gimping ass, go back to the Amazon employee again and buy the Maliketh arms and legs. Just because it gives us that little bit of extra defense and also I think it looks pretty cool mixed with the other stuff. With that being said, the robe covers a lot of shit, so you're probably not going to see it very often. Our penultimate step. And what was an easy contender for being the most obnoxious step in this. We're going to be getting Death Lightning, which means you have to kill one of those dragons who name also escapes me. This is easily my most forgetful episode yet. Uh, you have to go kill the Lich dragon the one in fia's dreams now in order to get there you have about two choices you can either go kill fake mog in the sewers or you could go do ronnie's quest line and then fight the two gargoyles now for some reason i thought it'd be easier to fight the two gargoyles however i did this recording on like new game plus seven or eight or some shit like that so guess what uh, they weren't gonna let me go easy and I, I fought them with the build that we're currently putting together it i did not have a good time i'm not gonna lie i really didn't have a good time guys it was fucking bad they beat my ass Yes. Uh, so yeah, just go through the sewers, do the stupid platforming section, go through the invisible wall, and then just horse platform your way down to the bottom. At least I think that's a smoother time, uh, depending on what New Game Plus cycle you are. If it's a fresh playthrough, or maybe the first New Game Plus, go fuck up the gargoyles. If it's really, really late, probably just want to use the sewers. Nonetheless, once you finally worked your way to under the tree thing, work your way through that area, go fight Fia's champions, and then afterwards we're gonna go talk with her, and then we're gonna become one of her champions by hugging the shit out of her. Make sure you do Ronnie's quest line to get that curse mark thing or whatever it was, give it to Fia, then simp even harder, go into her dreams, defeat the Lich Dragon, return to the Amazon employee, get your death lightning. Why this incantation specifically? Well, we're on New Game Plus, so we can kind of afford to just waste these level ups on faith for this pretty useless incantation in my opinion however the scythe the robes the hood the robes the scythe you know it's kind of like a death build sort of so i figured it'd be kind of cool to use the death lightning i will say aside from me casting it for the sake of this video i have not used it at all outside of this because you have to stand there for a really long time and cast it the last step and easily the most obnoxious step you might be wondering what could this possibly be that he left it for last well step 11 we're gonna be getting the alexander jar shard i absolutely fucking hate doing npc quest lines more than once so much so that in the playthrough I was recording for this video, I totally, totally forgot to speak with Alexander. Instead of me actually showing you when I did the quest line, I will go to all the spots where he should be and have pictures of jars in his place. So for the most part, doing his quest line, if I recall correctly, someone please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, really doesn't matter until you fight Radon. After you defeated Radon, speak with him where he says he's shoving other men inside of himself. Ha ha ha. Then you go meet him by Jarberg, which is over here in Lyurnia. Afterwards, you're going to 
to go have to fight one of those mega unique magma worm bosses. Otherwise, it's going to annoy the shit out of you while you're trying to talk to Pot Dad. After speaking with him in the lava, you're going to go to Crumbling Pharaoh Missoula. Go to this completely off the beaten path, uh, path, which can be accessed by those imp goblin key things. Uh, he's going to be chilling above where all the skeletons are. Afterwards, like every other NPC questline in almost every Souls game ever, he's going to demand that you kill him because warrior. Now, does every other NPC ask for you to kill them? No, but in some shape or form, the player interacting with the NPC sets the course of events that leads to the NPC's death. I legitimately liked Alexander. I hated killing him, but I did kind of roll my eyes. I'm like, God damn, is it me or does every NPC have to die when you're done interacting with them? I guess someone could go, oh, well, that lends into the whole environment of things feeling dreary and, you know, like depressing and shit. And yeah, sure. But I mean, it's been fucking 13 years of this shit. You don't think we could just catch a little bit of a break every now and then? Now he's dead. Get the Shard of Alexander. It gives a nice fat boost to our skills, or skill in this case, which is that Phantom Slash thing, which we're definitely going to be using a lot because it's cool as fuck. Damage is pretty good. And that about wraps this build up. One quarter function, three quarters fashion, because Fashion Souls is a real end game of any of these games. Anywho, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, dislike if you didn't like it, all that good shit. And until next time, don't forget to wipe before you shit.